Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, the place where we talk all things records. Firstly, I want to wish everyone a very happy new year and I hope you enjoyed your sort of celebrations and that sort of thing. Today I'm going to be doing sort of, I guess, Christmas haul sort of combined with New Year's stuff that I've bought and received for Christmas and that sort of thing. So let's get right to it. Now I've got quite a sort of variety of things, mainly two records and some kind of books and that sort of thing. So let's get to it. Now, firstly, I got um, a 1971 pressing of Sticky Fingers. Now, I do already have one, but it's um, this one's in much better condition. And this one was only £35, so I did sort of buy this myself as a pre for, sort of for myself as a present. It's got the zip. It does have the insert, so I think it's pretty good shape for 35 quid. The record does have a couple of scratches, but other than that, it's okay. If I get them both out, then maybe we can take a closer look. So it is the earlier label variation without the Promotone statement on it. Hopefully that will focus in if I will get out of the plastic first. And I will get the insert out in just a second, so hopefully that will focus in. As you can see there, there's no prime tone statement, and it is the sort of A4, B3 stampers, or matrix. You can get an A3, B3 one, but most of them are sort of 4, 3. There's Taito as well, without the statement. I'm not sure if you can get crossover labels. I'm sure there is a version out there, but it was nice to get the second, or the first even, label variation, because I do have my other copies with the promo tone. They're both 1971 pressings. This is just the earlier one. Because the actual Promotone sort of company thing wasn't found and sort of founded, I think, or established rather, till after the album was released, sort of thing. Is what I've read. It's I'm not exactly sure on it, but it's something like that. If I get the insert out. Now the zip on this one is kind of like fast and shut, but it's still in pretty good shape. Here's the insert. Great picture of the band there. Now this one's really clean compared to my other one, is just stained and whatever, but this is really nice. As you can see again the track listing there. A really uh, kind of funny statement there from them. Um, so hopefully you can see the credits. Hopefully that will focus in. I can't really... The lighting is not too great today, but I'll do my best. And secondly, i got another white album. But as you know, on this channel, I do love white albums. I'll get this one out of the plastic because it will reflect quite a bit. Hopefully you can see there. Oh, plastic sleeve fell off, but hopefully you can see here. It's fairly clean. Gonna be a bit hard to number there is um five hundred and thirteen thousand and five. And it has the poster, but none of the sleeves or pictures or anything. It is stereo. And as you all know, it's gatefold. Probably hasn't been opened too much this one. Now the spine is sort of folded over a bit, but it's sort of complete. Well it's not if I say complete, it's not really some of the laminates peeled away and everything, but there's no like actual sections missing, which you do get sometimes. And the text is there, if that will focus in, probably not, but it's quite hard to see. You'll only really be able to see it in real life, the text. So hopefully you might be able to see that this does still have the catalogue numbers and that sort of thing. Now we'll get the sort of poster out on one of the records. Now it did, it only came with um sort of replacement sleeves, but it is a first pressing as it's top loader as well, I'm sure you saw. Now this disc's in pretty good shape, there is a scratch on one of them, but as you can see there, nice dark green apples with the Sun UK statement and the Dash 1 matrices. I'll try and find it in the light there for you guys. Dash 1 on all sides. And one of them does actually have a 1G stamper, which indicates it's, it, well, one of the sides had an early, early disc, sort of, one of the, one of, well, the first disc, uh, first stamper created, sorry. But all the others are uh, quite higher, so they probably just swapped it out for that particular pressing. As you can see there as well, so it's all UK on that side. And I just love the White Album, as many of you know. It's such a great album to collect anyway, so I wasn't too worried about not having like all the other bits, because I do have some that are complete, so it's more of the numbers and that sort of thing. I will show the poster. The poster's pretty good shape, just one split, which is pretty normal to be honest. As you can see there, the lyrics and all that stuff. I'll try and open it up, but it's quite hard with to do it safely. Hopefully you can see there. As you know, the picture's on the other side. Hopefully I'll be able to open that up a little bit. But you can see there, pictures there, John there. And the world, obviously it's an original one because it says Northern Songs, or at least an earlier one. 
Hopefully that will focus in. Sorry, it's a bit dark, but brighten that up a bit. So yeah, it was nice to have another poster as well, just, just to make it sort of partly complete. And if I move that out of the way, I'll now move on to the books I got. So I was very enough, lucky enough to get the lyrics finally by Paul McCartney. Now I went to, um, this was actually while I was in Birmingham, and I got the bag with it from Waterstones. It was more expensive from Waterstones, but it was nice just to support a sort of high street store and kind of get that experience of being able to see it before I bought it. So if I just get it quickly, it's quite heavy. It's a lot heavier than I expected it to be, because you do have two books in there. I started the first one, but the packaging is just absolutely lovely. If you can see there, I will get one of the books out. You've probably already seen all of this before, but... I will get one of the books out just to show you the sort of design of the covers and the sort of, the sort of vibe it has really. So if I place that down there, because as I said, it is surprisingly heavy. Like I thought it would be weighty because of the books, but it's it's quite quite mental. As you can see, it was lovely on the sort of the covers with the design as well. It's just really really nice. Hopefully that brightness is a bit better. And I'll give you a little look inside. I did, as I said, I started to read some of them, but. They got pictures and you know lovely sort of text and it really is in depth. Depth, sorry. And even um, Paul Muldoon, the uh, the poet, does really good sort of annotations and it tells you the backstory of how the project came about and that sort of thing. So I'm really looking forward to getting the rest of it read because it's such an insight as well when you've been listening to the songs for so long and sort of staying on a Beatles theme, I guess. I got this nice book which I haven't started yet, but it's a hundred sort of pivotal moments in the Beatles history. Lovely cover there. And its uh, author is John N. Dorak. Can't say I've really heard of him, but it's going to be excellent to read this one. I, th I think I've seen this cover before, but it's going to be lovely to read with all that. Hope you can see the text and that sort of thing. Now, these two books are from a different sort of band, but I've really, I was on sort of a, sort of a Slade phase recently, so I've got Dave Hill and Noddy Holder's sort of autobiographies. I've read this one all the way through because I could not put it down when I first got it. It's absolutely brilliant. I highly recommend you get this if, if you're a Slave fan or even if you're just a music fan because you don't necessarily have to be a fan of them. Obviously, you appreciate it a lot more, but it's excellent. Lots of text. And there were some images on one of the pages, hopefully there. Yeah, look, so you can see you've got a lot of in-depth in to read and just excellent because you get to hear all the behind the scenes stories and that sort of thing. I'm um, sort of just a bit way through this Dave Hill one, as you can see. Got this little Beatles sort of, well, it's not a bookmark, it's from some packaging, but it's in a similar vein where it's just about like, of course, the band and that sort of thing. And this one has some sort of interesting images as well. And lots of chapters to get through. And this one says it's sort of featuring a new chapter and that sort of thing. Now, I don't know what the original version was like, but this so far this has been really good and it really tells you the backstory behind Dave actually about his like home life which is sort of where I got up to and uh, as you can see I've got quite a bit more to read but it's really going to be good to sort of get much more into this one because Slade I feel like a very underappreciated and you have such a bigger sort of appreciation when you read their backstory and that sort of thing even if it's just a quick read of an article so I highly recommend this one as well if you don't have it and if you're sort of just getting into Slade really because it really is helpful to appreciating their music. So that was kind of my little music and records haul for the Christmas holidays. I will now be back to posting sort of weekly, hopefully, and hope you enjoyed this little lot and thank you for watching.